Let's do it. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Hemp Hill Farm. Got that pet CBD oil. Got those gummies that help me sleep at night. That's uh, hemphillfarms.com. And that's Hemp Hill, H-E-M-P-H-I-L-L-P-H-A-R-M. Check them out. This is Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. Did you hear the tone loke that I did? No, what was the tone loke that you did? Let's do it. Let's do it. Dum, 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 dum. Great song. That was tone loke, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You know, today is my Pearl Harbor day. It is your Pearl Harbor day. Yep. It's I don't day. understand what that means. In, in everyone's lifetime, there's a certain cu- a couple of events that you remember the rest of your life. Okay. 9-11. Okay. Uh, the space shuttle, the first one blowing up. Okay. And terrible Tuesday, April 10th, 1979, tornado. Oh, this is Nader Day. This is Nader Day in Wichita Falls. Damn. How many years ago? 79, so 45 years ago. Wow. I pinned a... Funny you should bring that up. I pinned... Uh, let's see if I can find it in a timely manner. I probably can't. Uh... Da, da, da. Here it is. Worst tornadoes in history. Xenia, Ohio. Costliest. I'm sorry. Costliest. Oh, well, Joplin's going to be there because it was the latest one. Costliest. Uh, Birmingham. So Joplin, Birmingham. Why is there no sound to this? Is there sound out there? No, no. More Oklahoma was there. Nashville. I remember that one, but I wasn't there. Well, I wouldn't want a tornado chase there. Dallas. I wish they gave the years. Dallas, Dallas was the Christmas one, if you go back to it, I think. Bridge Creek Moore. It was there also. Feeding Hills, Massachusetts. We weren't I've there never, for that never one. never would have expected that to be one of them. Hackleburg, okay, Alabama. Alabama. Don't remember that. Wichita Falls, Here number nine. I F4. remember that picture. F4. Now, that's in... 19- million. Dollars. In 1970, $1.6 billion. Billion? What? No, that can't gotta be, right. be wrong. That can't be right at all. What were these others at? That can't be right. One point six billion. I don't know though. You know, you think about billions. Well, those are billions right yeah. there. Yeah, I guess. I wonder it if is. that's today's money though. No, which one falls so? tornado? If it was today, it wiped out a third of the town. Hundred thousand people. It displaced a third of them. So anyway, um, number ten's Omaha. I want. I want to go back to top that. That's your top ten costliest tornadoes in American history. That tornado that could have been a did you know that I grew up with. Uh-huh. I remember every detail of that day. So every now, single okay. detail. Is this three tornadoes that merge into one? It was actually a fourth tornado. It was on the, the left, left on the left side. So they've already merged. That, the one on no 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 no. There was another one on the left that was a funnel. It just kept bouncing up and down. That went right over our house. <clears throat> that did not join in. Where's your house here? Uh, well, no. It looks like there's another one forming up right here. No, that's a tower or something. Oh. I can't tell where that picture. That picture's taken on Hatton Road, I think, by looking at it. My my house was to the left of that, but it was a. Uh, and you had one bouncing overhead. It went over the top of our house. So did all these mini naders turned form? into one big one? Is that common in the nader world? That's a very violent storm right there. I it understand happens. that, but when an F four, like a, if there's an F four tornado, is it? cluster of tornadoes that like no sometimes you're just all big but it's all rotation it's the same thing i mean i was at uh uh sharon oklahoma me and coach Steele were chasing up there one time and we watched a a twin vortex yeah there was two stovepipe big tornadoes that were separated by about a quarter of a mile that stayed on the ground for about 40 miles really it was really an interesting thing to see Hmm. but that i've only encountered that i've seen twin vortexes more than once but that's the only time i've ever really saw one on the ground that stayed there but <clears throat> that that tornado in Wichita Falls, I was in fifth grade, and it was over Easter break. There's your map. And um, you care I, when when it when the tornado w- first went down, we we were all sitting out, a bunch of kids. We were outside. We'd been fishing with my dad that so day. So where are you at here? I am, where, where's I am your way house? way over. See where it says Candlewood? Southern Hills. No, go down. See Sun Valley. Yeah. See Southern Hills. I'm right across the road from that. Across the highway. Right right there. There's right Sutherland. There. Do you know where Sutherland's is? Which used to be it used to be Treasure City. Yeah. That's that right there. I'm right where your cursors. That's where I lived at. Matter of fact, that that road right there is ours. That's Bonnie Holmes. This dead end. Yep. That's that's it Running right there. North and south. Yep. That's where we lived at. I was probably about where the green and the blue meet. Is about where I lived at. So you experienced F two. Yes. Wind speeds. Yes. So where'd those boys die at? 
they died all over the place. My friend that died, died, see where Qantas Park is? See number four? Where it says number four right there? At the beginning? Yep, right there is where he died at a park. The one that looked up? Yeah, looked up. My board hit him in the head. But uh, we uh, we were in our, we were out in front of the house, and it was just a weird feeling. Everybody was talking about it. Vernon had been hit by a tornado earlier that day. Not the sa- same storm? The A uh, different storm, but the same cluster. Vernon, which <clears throat> all falls in a lot, and all got hit by a tornado the same day. And um, uh, my, our next-door neighbor was a meat inspector, and he worked at Ebner Brothers Packing Plant. And he come home, and he was real distraught because one of his friends that was a, a meat inspector was in Vernon and got killed in that storm. Oh, wow. And he come home and told his wife, Miss Hensley, and was talking to her about it. And I overheard him, you know, kids nosy how they are. And we were all outside and we were like, man, I wish a tornado would hit and knock our school out. We wouldn't have to go to school next week, blah, blah, blah. Careful how was we to know about 15 minutes later that exact thing would happen? Tornado came down. That picture there was what it looked like at first. And it went to a big, it looked like a rain shaft. It was so wide. The three? The three. Uh, it turned into a, a half mile wide. Yeah. And it looked like a half mile. A half mile don't sound that big when you're in the country. Right. But when you're talking about a city a half mile wide, that's all in Knox City. Yeah. It would, it would wipe out our whole town. Mm-hmm. And it started a swath on the very edge of town. We hit Memorial Stadium, went all the way through the whole town. It stayed on the ground the whole town. And there's an F5 winds and F4 winds. And it was bad. And But I remember it went on the ground. And I went through the house. And at that time, we had three TV stations. We had seven, six, and three. The news was on Channel 6, which was the news we watched. Rich Siegel, our weatherman, was talking, and he said there's a tornado on the ground at Ponderosa Estates, which is outside between Holiday and Memorial Stadium, on the ground. If you live in Wichita Falls, you need to take cover immediately. And that was it. the power went out. There's big Ooh. power lines. If you look by the stadium, yeah. there's a big, and it went through them, and it wiped all the power out in town except for very few places. The power went out in town. I went out in the backyard. We had a we had a barn in the back, and we had a Shetland pony. My dad had one of them old Kodak disposable cameras. Why do y'all have a Shetland pony? I have no. My dad thought it'd be cool for us to have one. Mm. So, anyways, we had this Shetland pony, and that some bitch was kicking and raising hell. <clears throat> My dad was taking pictures with this old shitty fucking <laughs> po- Kodak handheld camera. Wish you could find the pictures now. Oh, they're in some of his stuff. Oh, are they? And so, anyways, I uh, bet he got his finger in most of them. <laughs> I'm sure big old fing- fat fingers he had. Anyways, he goes, tie that damn, get, tie, untie that horse. I said, he'll run off. He said, give him a chance. If it's tornado hits, give him a chance to get away. So I untied the horse, and I went and stood on top of the barn. It was a flat-roofed barn, probably eight foot tall, and I stood on it with my dad, and United Grocery Store is across the road from a, at, at Kickapoo Airport, and they, have a big, they had a big old sign out front, and we're sitting there watching that, and all of a sudden, that fucking sign went. Where are we at on the down. Um, if you'll go to Midwestern Parkway, I see the to oh, the right, oh, oh, to right, there. right over there. See where it says Su- Southern Hills, right over there is where that's going to be. Hirsch, right, right, right there, there at Hirsch, somewhere right over in there is where the uh, United was. Is United was, and we could see it. It's it's a half mile from us. Yeah, and the sign goes down, and our yard, our lawnmower went across the yard by itself. Two wind was blowing, and Dad goes, "Get your house and ass in the closet with your mom." And now it says right here, two hundred seven to two hundred sixty miles per hour, right there when that happens. Yeah. Well, what 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 miles per hour do you feel over here at that time? Oh, 50, 60, 70 mile an hour winds. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, you're the the thing is is the sound. Yeah, it's Freight like train. A fu- it's it, when people tell you it's a train, and I've heard it chasing before. Mm-hmm. That's what it sounds like. Mostly a big monster tornado like this. It's just evil and wicked and black, and it come across. And I got in the in the closet, and then I'm crying because I want my dad to come because he's hard headed. I'm afraid he's gonna get blown away and die. He comes in the closet. They close the door. And I'm telling you this, we didn't go to church every Sunday. We did go down. My dad used to take me and Tony to Floral Heights Methodist Church in Wichita. We go to church once or twice a month. So we did go to church some. But I'm telling you right now, that old story, you can't find an atheist in a foxhole. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. When you're in a closet in a tornado, there's a lot of praying going on. Oh, yeah. Me, Tony, my mom, my dad, and the cat we had. <laughs> Isn't that deal? And all of a sudden, the wind is broke. <laughs> And my mom's like, oh, my God, our house is gone. Our house is gone. I'm scared to death. My dad's a big, <laughs> my dad was a big man. You knew that anyway. Yeah. And dad's holding the closet and got all of us behind him. You know, he's kind of wrapped everybody up and stuff. Then he opens the door and he leaves. And he told my mom, he said, Christine, come here and look at this. What do you think Jeff's going to do? Look. Right there and looked. I went on our front porch and it was going across the side of our house. <laughs> and it was just black. I mean, black. And shit was flying in the air and stuff. 
And he told me, he goes, or he told us, he goes, Chris, he goes, I'm going to go check on my parents were divorced. I mean, I had a good dad mom when it came to being, we didn't have all these stupid visitation rights and stuff. Mm hmm. Looking back now, my dad did not want to stand and not with him hanging out. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> he, for Ron. He coached kid baseball, and he took his hunting, and he took his fishing, but he liked having his separate life. But he goes, I'm going to go check my house out. His house was right between where the tornado was. Tony went with him. What do you mean right between? Like to going back this way? To yeah, Tony, uh, like to the north of there just a little bit. Right back, and then there's about where dad lived at. So dad lived over there, and to get to there to there, you got to go through a bunch of shit now. Yeah. And Tony, Tony's scared, and he's like, he was crying, and Dad's, he's, I want to go with you, Dad. I want to go with you, Dad. And Dad told me, he said, well, we, we just bought a new boat. He goes, I'm sure that fucking boat of mine's right through that fucking house. And so Dad's figuring he's going to pull up, and his boat's going to be in the middle of his house. And it missed his house by about three blocks. So between our two houses, both of them missed a tornado by three blocks from being direct hit on That's both crazy. sides. Got to the house, was going over there, and they were gone like two or three hours. I'm scared to death now. I'm scared something happened to my dad and my brother. I'll never forget this. They get back, and dad pulls up, and he told my mom, he goes, everything's fine at my house. He goes, I should have never went. He goes, I've got to get to the fire station. He goes, give me any blankets that you have that you don't need. We're going to need blankets. He goes, I'll call you when I know more. He goes, she goes, well, I'm supposed to go to work tomorrow. He goes, you don't have a job no more. <laughs> Because she worked at Albertson's grocery stores and it was gone. It was wiped completely out. And that's clear over here, isn't that's it? That's on Southwest Parkway. Would have been like right right in there. About where the six is is exactly where it's at, I think. I think that's pretty close. So, anyways, we get to dad dad leaves. And and before he left, he told my mom, he goes, You need to talk with Tony a little bit. <clears throat> he goes, We pulled up at Winthorpe's road by the, there's a dairy queen there used to be it's a loves deal down there and he said i pulled up right there and he goes there was a dead guy laying in the ditch Oof. and this guy came up and this wife goes oh my husband's dead 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 and the guy stole his watch and ran off son of a bitch <clears throat> and dad said if i'd had more time i'd have whooped his ass <laughs> but he and dad said i didn't have time to mess with that and there's shit he said it takes forever to get anywhere he goes don't go anywhere you make the boy stay home be right here and i'll call you tomorrow when i find out something <clears throat> that night we went to bed and it was a very long night. My mom washed us. We got a whore bath, basically, out of the back of the toilet, took the top of it off and used that water. And she gave my mom was a neat freak. We took the bath that we could. We got in bed. And that night, all I could hear was helicopters. Right. All freaking night long. National Guard. National Guard coming in. Wake up the next morning. It's a clear, beautiful day. Me and the Rat Pack got on our bikes. We were gone. It's down. We went through all the shit where people are rolled up and stuff, and the firemen are painting signs on the doors that it's safe. And my dad's job that night was when he got to the fire station, got on a truck, and they were turning gas off over by Memorial Stadium, clear on their side of town. And a buddy of his was walking across the parking lot. Somebody drove out the board out. He would right in between the eyeballs with the two-by-four sticking out. Mm. But it was a mess. But all they did was – was and the whole world was it, – it was it's so – it's so – it's amazing because there was such a horrible, violent thing, and a lot of good people died. But the, the town came together, and everything was based on that tor the tornado for a long time in our town. I mean, you know, that's that's that was I was playing kid baseball then. Dad's coaching the team. You got teams displaced. That's how Chance and Tony become friends. Chance's school was wiped out completely, and they didn't have a team. So Chance's Chance's brother come over and played for dad. Really? And that would they would have been in second grade, and that's how Chance and Tony <clears throat> become friends. Chance was home by himself, seven years old, and knocked the blew the roof off their house. Jeez. What did he do? Did he did his, he ever said closet or just bathtub or hit under just, a, hit under his uh bunk bed. But his parents had a little farm not very far from there, and they were at the farm and they just went and come back. I mean, it was the seventies. People didn't worry about, you know, kids right. stayed home at seven years old, wasn't that well, big a deal? Right. And just went down the road and when this tornado hit, but I mean it was how far does it go? Because on the map, it this just shows Wichita Falls. It goes, it goes all the way to Dean and Jolly, and then it picked back up at Dean or Jolly. They found things in Eureka, Oklahoma, from Wichita Falls, which is six fifty miles 50, away. Right. They found a bunch of bank stubs and stuff in the bank. Southwest National Bank was in the um, on Midwestern Parkway, and there was nothing left but the safe. Even five years later, you drove by, not probably, probably five, probably two years later, and that big old bank safe was sitting on the middle of the foundation. There was nothing left. Just chilling. Yep. Dad Dad had a construction company, and he was a fireman. He had a guy that worked for him, and all he did all day long was go to the lumber yard. 
I bet. You'd be in line for six to eight hours. Oof. Just waiting to get your load of whatever it was. Now, who rebuilds all this? When a natural disaster like this happens, does does FEMA come in and rebuild your house, or, or are you just looking for like a like like we would here, like a private construction no. company? Well, on on building and stuff, yes. Just like you do now. The, FEMA's not in the construction business. They're in fucking them people out of money and gouging them with bulldozers and stuff. They clean up some stuff, but they don't build nothing back. But, the, I mean, if your house got, like, what was the wait limit? Like, the wait time. Like, if you look, if you lost your house, how long are you going to be displaced before you're in another home? There was probably, well, if you if you lost your home, what happened was Kiwanis Park, where I played kid ball, went mm-hmm. from a place we played kid ball to 1,500 government trailers. So the government would move the in trailers? The government went in and built in. They, they have government trailers, and they still do today when there's hurricanes and stuff. Yeah. They bring in these government trailers. And there was, like, Kiwanis Park, the whole park was nothing but a trailer park of people that had lost everything in the tornado. So you would go down and ply, like, the city hall or somewhere for a government assistance. They gave government loans, pretty cheap interest rates. I think everybody qualified. And they built, a, and they had these government, and there was probably two or three different places in town that they had these government trailers. What chance in them do? Because they don't have a roof on their house. They can't live there. I, you know, I don't, I don't know what they did. I don't know if they, you know, I don't know that their their house didn't get completely blew away, but some of their neighbors did. But uh, the, you know, the trailer park me and Tony grew up in later, where we moved later, it was completely gone. I mean, there's nothing left. The guy, uh, we had a tornado warning like two years later. And boy, I'm going to tell you what, after a town got hit by a tornado, yeah. people were very, very, they had their head on a swivel at the storms. Probably any time a cloud blew and up. I asked this old. There's an old man lived in this trailer behind, or lived in a house behind the trailer park, and that his his cellar would where we'd go. And we were there one time, and I asked him. I said, "Were you here when the tornado hit?" He goes, "I sure was." And he had vents in his cellar, and he goes, "I watched all them trailers get blown away." Hmm. He said, "You know, it was just right across the alley. It was not right. his house lost the roof and all that shit, but it blew them trailers completely gone." But the crazy thing was, there'd be a neighborhood. One one of my good friends. Lived in a real nice neighborhood in Wichita Falls. And they went in their cellar. And Wichita Falls had been hit by a big tornado in 1964. So people still were pretty, you know, they paid attention a lot to the weather even back then. And there was an Indian doctor that had moved there, him and his family. And they're sitting down eating dinner. And the sirens go off and shit. They don't know nothing about tornadoes. Oh, Their house wasn't hurt at all. Everybody around them was. Slots or dots, Indian? Dots. Dots. And they sit there and had their dinner and watch all the neighbors' houses got blown away. Damn. And they didn't even know. Right. But it was it was something that that's today is my is my December seventh of my lifetime. Just something that resonates with me that when I go when if I die, or which I'm gonna die, if you ask me on my deathbed, if I remember April tenth, I'm gonna say, Oh, exactly. I can remember my friends sitting with them outside. I remember my baseball coach lived three doors down from us, standing on his roof holding his TV antenna the whole time watching it. I mean, just, I mean, that was just the world. It was just, but it was never a, it, it was just such a somber event and I'll never forget it. And there's so many people. And I think that's what got my love for storms. Now, a couple of years after that, my ass wasn't going to chase a damn tornado. I was scared to death. Right. I was shell shocked <clears throat> between the plane crashing two doors down from us as a kid. I used to be scared to death. The small planes flying by at nighttime. Mm-hmm. If I could hear them flying, I just knew they was going to crash into my house and kill me. So I, I witnessed a plane crash with a bunch of people get killed when I was little. And then a year later, I watched that tornado. Was there a bunch of looting or just the one guy that stole the watch off the dead guy? There was probably some. National Guard killed a guy. Oh. He was looting in a neighborhood one time or wasn't supposed to be. And they shot and killed him. Shot, Said, shot him in it. his fucking back. Oh, boy. Diff- could you imagine that today? No. We didn't have a world full of pussies back then. He should have been doing what he was doing. I agree. But, but well, yeah, you. matter of fact... We were sitting outside one night. We had a curfew. Dark oh, sure, yeah. curfew for the whole town for like a month. Right. And we were all sitting outside talking. We're not even in a zone that's done. Our neighborhood hadn't changed much. You get four or five blocks away, it does. But where we're at... Citywide curfew? Citywide curfew. Oh, other than... So if you lived on the north side of town, you, you're you going in at night. You're going in at dark. Everywhere. The whole town. The problem was, or not a problem was, everybody had roof damage. If you lived on the north side of, Knox, of Wichita Falls, you got major hell damage. Oh, we didn't have the hell where we were. Right. The hell was all on the north side. So those people's cars got all held out and their right. roofs were gone. Our roofs were all replaced because of wind damage. Every roof in the neighborhood was having to be replaced. It had 70 to 100 mile an hour winds. <clears throat> but sitting outside one night talking right at dark like we always did until my mom hollered to come in. Poof. Helicopter. Big old, big old light. 
come over the loudspeaker. You need to go in your houses. Wow. I mean, they wouldn't put up with your shit for a while. They, they weren't going to put up with that. But it was a it was a very somber day. That was the tornado was equivalent to the Moore tornado. The only thing difference is is we luckily were out of school at that time. If Easter. we if we would have not if we would have been in school, I would have been at kid baseball practice. Tony would have been at kid baseball practice. The boys club that we went to every day after school was totaled. Our school was completely wiped out. I went to school with no windows in a school, no air conditioning, and we had peanut butter and syrup sandwiches every day. Because that's what the score we brought on lunch. Which more tornado, the Newcastle one or the Bridge Creek one? The which one's the difference on t- date wise? Both of those were horrible. It doesn't say. The the the, the earliest one I think is the. Uh, let me see the Bridge Creek one. Where is that? Where's where's that cross on forty at? Does it show where it crosses? Uh, no, go back Bridge Creek. Yeah, let me see that real quick. Oh, that's ninety nine. That okay, that's not the one. It was the one that that was the more Newcastle one. That. That one right there gave me complete memories going back to my childhood. Uh, it, it was that bad. 2013. Yeah, it, it was it was horrible. It, that old metal bridge on I-44, if you're coming, or I-40 that's coming south out of Knox, or coming out of Oklahoma City going towards Lawton, that metal bridge was rolled up like foil. I would have never thought you could make a bridge do that. Mm-hmm. And it just cratered that big old metal bridge. And I saw water trucks that day that were rolled over full of water. The worst thing was, was hearing the the horses. Because when you turn off right there to go into more, if you cut back across by that old speedway and you cut back in there, there's a lot of people that owned five and 10 acres and they had horses and stuff, you know, country living, they thought, and they lived in Oklahoma City. And you could hear them horses that were crippled and just whining and stuff. And I'll never forget that. And because and, one there was one horse like on the other side of a ditch, and I think it was me and Fred, and maybe Coach, and it could have been Harry too. But anyways, I was looking in my console for a gun because I was going to shoot it and put it out of its misery. I just you could hear it just bellowing, and it was just but people didn't have time to fuck with a horse. Yeah, and I don't know what the winds were, but I think the winds were around two hundred eighty miles an hour at that elementary school there. Whew. And there was nothing left. It was a it was a very somber time. That's why I chase tornadoes. <clears throat> I love to see tornadoes. I don't like to see anybody get hurt. But the destruction that a tornado causes is epic. And people just don't get it until they've been actually. You need to, if you don't respect them, you're a fool if you live where they're at. There's nothing, you shouldn't be scared of them. But you should respect them if they're coming to you to at least get underground. Yeah. And don't put your kids in harm's way for sure. And get out of a vehicle. That's the worst place you can be in a tornado. More people are killed in Wichita Falls because of vehicles than anything. Got to get out of them. One, uh, it's gonna, one, She's going to toss you around like a rag doll. One of my dad's friends, the fireman, him and his family were in one of those big claw foot bathtubs. Mm-hmm. Again, no people were fat back then. Right. They all fit in a claw tub. And got in there and put a mattress on top of them and heard crashing and shit falling down and stuff. And he pulled the mattress off of him. He said it was a fight to get it off and get up. And he sees a wheel. Hmm. And to attach that wheel was an axle. Oh, there was shit. a car in their house. Wow. And it got stuck in one of the kids' bathrooms. But it's the first thing he saw, that was it. The bathtub was there and the car was there and the house was falling around him. That's what I'm always afraid of getting in the cellar is if shit falls on top of you. Because number one... Well, someone's going to come get you because I, I know. Well, I know that, but I don't know if the engineering's any good on my cellar, Jeff. Can, can it handle a, Can it? Huh? What do you mean engineering? Can it handle a car sitting on top of it well, or yeah. a car getting slammed into it? Well, it won't get slammed into it. It'll go over it. It'll slam into your house. <clears throat> no, like what if it's like up in the air and then it well, just... <laughs> that's God's will if that happens. Well... Let me tell you, I, I, if you sell... I don't always agree with if God's you, will if it's got me, if yeah. it's involving a fucking car on my head. If you sell tornado s- uh, sellers and you sell the above ground ones, then you better turn this off because I'm going to hurt your feelings. Oh, if waste you, the money. If you buy a tornado seller or a safe room or whatever the hell they call it, and it's above ground, don't let them bullshit you. That thing can withstand four or 500 mile an hour winds. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But it can't withstand a Chevy pickup getting hurled into it at 280 miles an hour. That's what you deal with. Right. And I've told so many people that buy them, and they're like so proud. Hey, come in. You don't want that. You want something underground. Well, it'll, yeah, it'll hold the wind, but it's what's in the wind that's going to hit you and knock you out. Yeah. I mean. It's not that the wind's blowing. It's what the wind's blowing. Yeah, and so if you're above ground and you get hit by an F3 or 4 tornado, you're all in God, you know, it's lucky. 
You're if you survive, you're going to be very lucky. I always because I was always told as a kid coming in, you'd get in because we'd have tornado warnings at school practice and stuff. You get in the hallway and you tuck your head in and shit, and it's kind of like that airplane. They tell you that sort of break your neck and kill you real quick, right? So you don't suffer, but. If you're in a house and a big tornado hits, there's nothing left but usually the bathtub because they were they were cemented into the the walls. Mm-hmm. That's it, or onto the ground, onto the foundation. There was nothing left. Sometimes there's a, a fireplace that's left, but you need to be in the middle of your house. So I bet today's bathtubs are not tornado proof. Shit, no, I wouldn't want to ride one of them in your house right now. Your house is completely redone. You have a nice home. If a big tornado hits your house, where do you think in that house you'd want to ride out that storm? Well, we still have a cast iron tub, but it's not it's not cemented into the walls like those old like those old houses that have that pink and blue bathroom. All those tiles, because I've redone a couple of those bathrooms. All of those, it's like it's a concrete. It, it's chicken wire and concrete basically is what they put those tiles onto. It's a pain in the ass to take out, but like now it's just sheetrock and then that cast iron tub is. All where, we where in your house would you think safe? That's other than the cellar. Nowhere. Probably that cast iron tub would be our best bet. You know in our house what I would want to do? Mm. Pray. Our bathroom is the only room, especially we did you you did the brick shower for us. Mm-hmm. That might be the only place, but I wouldn't trust that thing in a big. No, well I took out that all that concrete shit. Yeah, in your, there, there's in that one shower. There's there's nothing there for us. So we're I mean we would be just to the mercy of God. There's nowhere to go. That, you got that big hallway. Which big hallway? At the front of the house. You could go there, maybe. Maybe. It's a pier and beam house. Yeah, but it's maybe. gone. It's it's the only, you know. I don't know. There, there's not. There's that's what I'm saying. There's just not we don't the average house does not have a place to go if it's wiped out by a big, big tornado. You gotta be underground. And that's that's that that's that's the truth. I mean you talk about, look at the damage Haskell had. Haskell had a really big storm, what's today, Wednesday? Monday. Monday night. They had 80, 85 mile an hour wind. Straight line winds. Straight line winds. And it wasn't a tornado, straight line winds and, and hail. And the hail wasn't really big. Anywhere from golf ball to marble size hail. It wiped out. The windows are knocked out of houses. Everybody's got mm-hmm. new, they're new, new roofs all over down there. Holly, Anson, Stanford, that whole area just got pummeled. The guy that re- is redoing my kitchen, his whole, he, all, his whole house, windows are gone. It blew all the windows out of the house. Blew it all completely. Okay. And they it, were in the hallway. 80 mile an hour winds. Yeah. Okay. Imagine 200 mile an hour winds. Swirling. Yes. Yeah. It's not coming from just one direction. It, it rips around. I saw a video. There's a video you can find on YouTube from it's interested. And it's the more tornado. And it shows the guy. I call them canoe blind or, or canoe safes. And what they are is they're a safe that you, you pull the top over the top of you. And you sit like in a canoe. You just you sit on a little little pad in the middle of it and it's probably 10 or 12 foot long and you can put four to six people in them and you slide the the, the roof slides on top of them and they got vents in them and most people have them in their in their garages and they park their car over the top of them and then they pull their car out but you can get in that safe and it shows a guy it shows a guy with a camera that he can stick up to the deal and it shows the neighbor's house across the way and it shows that house is doing real well and one board it's a brick in the middle of it, oh. and that son of a bitch falls apart just like the bad, big bad wolf blowing up. Probably that one on the left right there. This uh, one? No, yeah, right, that one on the well, left. Well, the same that. video. I think that's the video, and Why? it's a very cool video to Why watch. Why do I not have any fucking sound? Driving me crazy. Yeah, watch this. And all it takes is one board to hit it. God we don't it. give a shit about what you're saying. Show the video. Oh. Sticks his phone up. That's that's the safe I'm talking about, or the safe room, or whatever you want to call it. It's the best shelter there is that you can get for a little, for a garage. You bastards! There. Oh, you cocksuckers! And all it takes is one board. So I saw it without all this shit when it was just a pure video. I well, know. now that now the news has got a hold of it, Jeff. But it shows the house across the street just completely, just eventually from one board hit a brick and popped a hole in the seam and it just went apart like a like a wolf. Blew on it. Like a cheap suit. Yep. So if you're, if you're buying your safe, get something that's underground. Or a cellar, I mean. There, now I got sound. 
I, I was one of the people that were closest to the door, and uh, I managed to get a pretty good angle through. But I mean, this it's the same right. video, so any, either way, I got the sound fixed. So, but anyways, that was a, that was an interesting deal. But anyways, today is my day of infamy for me in my lifetime. Pearl and, Harbor and everybody day. in Wichita Falls, I've seen it all over Facebook today. If you're from Wichita Falls, everybody's posting all their pictures. Forty-five years ago. That's crazy. Not that long ago. A long ne time ago. Never, for it. never forget. Nope. Never, ever, ever forget it all about it. Because so. the next one's coming. Dun, dun, dun. What a day. Yep. What a day. Now, was that early? Because most of the time, the violent storms are in May. Six o'clock. No, in the year. Oh, yeah. April's early for that. Most big storms are going to be... Well, you can have them. Dallas deadly tornado was in damn December. But... Most tornadoes, tornadoes are really going to heat up in May for us where we live at. Dixie Alley, which is hot right now and which is going to have big storms today, I think, in Alabama, that's an April storm, March, April. Mm -hmm. And then it shifts back here. We're supposed to have really bad storms here Monday again. I'm probably going to get a chase on Monday. So we will we will see. Um, Did, did you know that the uh, the Irish hate the monarchy? Well, yeah, they they put their thumb on him forever. Well, here's a, here's a funny video I've seen. So you know the guy that plays Oppenheimer, Killian Murphy. He, uh, I'll just pull it up. He plays what now? Notice how Cillian Murphy keeps his hands in his pocket when talking to Prince Harry. See that spite in his eyes while the prince is speaking? It's not unintentional. It's a protest. He's Irish. Killian Murphy is not the prince. As Ireland fought for their independence, the British royal family gave a decree in Cork City that any Irish man found with his hands in his pocket should be shot. For this reason, along with many other stunts, the Irish despise the royal family, with many taking to putting their hands in their pockets when interacting with any member of the ruling class as a form of protest. Ronan O'Gara, whom you can see in this shot, did the same thing when he met the Queen, causing an uproar. But keeping their hands in their pockets continues to be a simple yet effective way common Irish people show their defiance for the establishment. They just say, fuck you. Fuck you, royal family. They just keep their hands in their pockets. Did. Well, we're, well, we're talking about royal family and colonialism. There was an article I read this morning. I was just looking for it. It's not here now. The Biden and them just put a czar down for racial equality or something. Mm-hmm. And it's a lady that is so obviously hates America. And I just don't understand how these people get places in Washington, D.C. Because she was talking about the colonization in America. Yeah, we were kicked out of it. was people who stand up against the colonies what started this whole thing. But I don't have, I'm not a big, I don't have no problem. I don't have any respect for the royal family. As well. They've never achieved anything. Well, the Irish really hate them, evidently. And I don't blame them. Do you? No, I mean, it sounds. They treat them like shit. Yeah. They just keep their hands in their pocket whenever they see them. That's got to be like a real big thumb to the eye. Because Harry had to know what was going on. Nobody else has their hands in their pocket except for the one Irishman. You think he gives a shit? Probably not. I don't know. He might. Like, here's this motherfucker. He's going to do it. He's going to put his hands in his pocket as soon as I walk up. I don't know much about the royal family other than what everybody else knows. I did watch The Crown. I thought it was a really interesting, ep really cool series because I like history. And there's a lot of cool things on it with Queen Elizabeth. But they were big TV people. Love TV. Oh, huh? love to watch TV. Well, good for them. All, all about TV. Huh. So they had to know what the people's thinking was because they watched TV. Oh, right. Like, I'm not going to use Joe Biden because he's got dementia and he don't have a clue what's going on. But Obama, Donald Trump, George W. Bush. Most of those people are so out of touch with reality. I think that's why Trump resonates more with most people. Is that he seems to be more in tune with the regular people because he, he always dealt with his construction guys and stuff. My friends that are friends with George W. Bush said when he was younger, he was really a good dude. They don't speak to him no more, so they don't have no use for him. Mm -hmm. But they grew up with George Bush. He was a regular guy. Drank, drank beer and snorted coke around all of them. But Can't hate that. Obama, I don't think he understands, and I don't think Bush now either. I don't think they understand real Americans and our real issues. Obama did not grow up in America. Don't give a shit where he was born at. He grew up in Indonesia. That's a known fact. So he didn't grow up with American ideas like we have. Mm -hmm. He didn't grow up pledging allegiance to the flag. He didn't grow up loving America. He grew up hating America, probably. 
because he grew up in a Muslim household and they hate Americans. Did uh, did you see those uh, people in um, Dearborn, Michigan, chanting "Death to America" on mm-hmm. the streets? No, I missed that one. Yeah, where's well, old Governor Gretchen at speaking out against that stuff? Right, I can't imagine living in a country and speaking out against hating it. Fucking leave. You'd figure. But. I mean, yeah. I mean, why are you staying here if you hate the way we do things? You know, we keep bending over for you all the time, and it's ba- it's back assards for us. It's getting that way. Also, we're Biden, and then we're really pushing now. They're going to try to get all the gay votes. Well, they got five percent of the population. So they don't think that's going to help you get elected. Yeah, but they're going to need every vote they can get. Yeah, I don't think they're well. That most of the gay people I know that I'm friends with mm-hmm. that I really know really well are all conservatives. They're mm-hmm. they're voting for Trump. They did before. They're right. going to their this will be their third time to vote for him. You know, I'm sure the 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 trannies, they're not going to, but they're not expecting to vote for them anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, Dirk has a really good idea. He says if we will all conservative families will have three to five kids, we'll pass them here in about ten years. Can't afford it though. I'm not having another kid. Just I mean not for that reason. Do you worry about making payments on anything ever? No, but... Well, well yeah, you do, because if you didn't have a job, you wouldn't know how to do it, You, because you work. But well, I guess I didn't understand your question. Do, do you worry that if something happened, you couldn't pay for all your shit? But I can pay for all my stuff. But because you work. Right. But let's say something happened to you and you couldn't. As a family, we're going to make sure everything's taken care of anyways. Mm-hmm. But you, you would have some kind of worry. If your kids want braces, who's paying for them? Me. If your kids need glasses, who pays for them? Me. If they need food, who pays for them? Well, I do. Well, we we pay for a lot of food, too, for them. But no, you know what I mean. But you do. Can you imagine raising your family knowing that the government's going to pay for every fucking thing you do? It's what they want. They they have that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they get they get housing for either cheap or nothing. They get free food. Free braces, free eyeglasses, free health care. You get paid to go to doctor's visits. You get internet and a cell phone. Why the fuck would they ever work? Right. Well, they're taking the incentive out of it all. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. When I was a kid growing up, there wasn't any safety nets. Right. I, there was food stamps and there was government housing. But I don't know how you qualified for it. We never had any of it. I remember when government cheese was the thing. Mm. You go to the commodity stores, as Ed used to tell me, I think that's what they have on the reservation, but you got government cheese, and I think they had milk and something else. And that would have been during the Jimmy Carter days because that's how good things were when Jimmy Carter was in office. Right. But it's, it's just it's crazy where we've come as a society where that's just so acceptable. And everybody's a victim mm-hmm. all the time. I don't care what happens, you're a victim. And it's always based on something other than character. Yeah. I don't know. God love Jimmy Carter, though. He's a good man. Probably one of the best people we've ever had president as an actual person. But not very smart. Well, maybe he's got bad intel. No, I think he I think he just seen the good. I think he's like a preacher. You see the good in people. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of shitheads in the world. I mean, a lot of shitheads, and they control a lot of stuff. There's an interesting video I'm trying to find about the sanctions that we put on Iraq. Maybe this was it. (sighs) We'll see. Human history on Iraq. We cut off their food, and we cut off their medicine for 12 years. 100,000 Iraqis die per year. By the end of the Clinton administration, the first eight years of these brutal sanctions, 800,000 people were dead. The UN estimated that of the 800,000 Iraqis that had starved to death or died because of lack of medicine, 500,000, half a million, were age five and under. We murdered a half million babies in that eight year span of time. Who is this liberal fuck? Roy Casagranda. But what, what's interesting about all this is, so Iraq had, and I was, that was the video I was trying to find. This isn't the video I was trying to find. What he's talking about before, we put the sanctions on them. Um, 
you know, the WMDs and all that stuff. What, what Iraq did is they blew them up in the desert. So what? there were weapons of mass destructions at one time. And they or whatever they were. So they blow them up. Mm-hmm. And Clinton says, we need, we need them. We need, your, we need your bombs. We need everything. And they were like, we don't have them. We blew them up in the desert. He's like, well, that's not good enough. We need them. So he sends a guy over there, and his, ho- the, his only job is to sift through the desert sand and find the serial numbers because we gave him the bombs, of course. So they've got, we've got the serial numbers. He finds 98% of the serial numbers in the desert sand. And then the Monica Lewinsky thing blew up. And so basically what he's saying in the video before that, that I was trying to, I thought I pinned it, but I guess I didn't. Anytime Clinton got in trouble... It was just, well, let's go to war with Iraq. And he would always use Iraq kind of as the sleight of hand whenever he got, whenever he put his penis in the wrong spot. But that's all that guy's job was there. He was there for eight years, like he's saying there. He's there for eight years. He finds like 98% of the serial numbers in the sand where they had blown them up. And it still wasn't good enough. But I don't, I don't understand why we owe Iraq shit. I hate for those kids. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and this is that uh, collateral damage type deal. And I know it sounds really bad on my part, but I thought I pinned that video. It's not like we're doing this to Switzerland. They're bad people. Mm -hmm. Now, the people that live there may not all be bad, but the regime that was running that place was horrible. They killed each other all the time. How many? I'm going to be wrong on this. Probably it's Sunnis, right? Is one of them? It's Sunnis and Shiites. That's the two different tribes. Yes. How, what, what, what's the the factor that's running the place? What are they? Are they Sunni or are they Shiites? I can't remember. Okay. Let, what, let's say whatever. Let's say they're Shiites, just for argument's sake, because I have no idea. Here's the video. Okay. George Bush Sr. got on TV and announced to the world, he doesn't, not, not even bother talking to Saddam Hussein, right? He announces to the world that all Iraq has to do to get back into the community of nations, because he doesn't know the meaning of the word nation, get back in the community of nations is to give up its weapons of mass destruction. Now, everybody knew what they meant, uh, what junior or senior meant was that he had to give up the chemical weapons that the U.S. had supplied Iraq. And so Saddam Hussein did. He took all the chemical weapons and he put them in the desert. He had the army take them out in the desert, different locations, and blew them up. In the act of, in August, he blew them up. No, we didn't, we didn't, those were the weapons to Iran. We actually sold those for market value to Iraq. He takes them out in the desert and blows them up. In August of 1991, he blows up all of it, as far as we know, 100%. Well, the UN weapons inspection regime shows up shortly afterwards, and really early on, one of the guys, the guy who ends up in charge of it is a guy named Scott Ritter, who had been a Marine, a U.S. Marine. He's a self-proclaimed conservative Republican. He also got in trouble for child pornography after this. This guy here did or Scott He goes Ritter. to Scott the Ritter. Iraqis and goes, okay, show me your weapons of mass destruction. Well, first of all, chemical weapons are not weapons of mass destruction. That's wrong. Biological and nuclear weapons are weapons of mass destruction. Chemical weapons are more of a combat terror weapon because they're really scary because they do horrible things like burn your lungs, right? But they don't necessarily kill in large numbers any more than conventional weapons do. You can drop conventional bombs on a city and smash it into the Stone Ages, and in many ways it's more efficient and easier than dropping chemical weapons, in part because chemical weapons, they could get blown away by the wind, air conditions matter, if you, if you, have, you know, the pressure in the atmosphere can change the effectiveness of the chemical weapons. Having said that, the Iraqis go, we don't have any chemical weapons. Scott Ritter goes, no, I know you have chemical weapons. He then shows them the receipts, <laughs> right? We kept our copy, the merchant copy of the receipts. Here, even had the serial number for every, every, how do you think we had the serial numbers? That's because we're the ones who sold them, those rockets. You had, you had VX, you had Saren, right? It just shows them, here, look, the, oh, the Iraqis go, yeah, we had them, but you said we had to get rid of them. We did, we blew them up. Because you blew them up. Yeah, we didn't think you wanted anybody to find out who was giving us the chemical weapons. 
we thought we were helping you by getting rid of the evidence. So he's like, all right, show me where the weapons were. So they take them out in the desert, and they set up sifters. And they sift through the sand, and they're looking for the serial numbers. From 1992 to 98, that's the primary task of the UN weapons inspection regime, is to go into the desert and sift the sand, looking for the serial numbers for the rockets. In that six years, Scott Ritter found 98%. In fact, he was ready in 1998 to give Iraq the clean bill of health. He was ready to say, Don, you're, you, 98%, there's 2% floating out there, you're not a threat to us. In fact, even the 2% wouldn't have been a threat to anybody, not even Iraq's neighbors, not a threat to the United States. They didn't have the capacity to launch them to us. They didn't have intercontinental ballistic missiles. They had short-range missiles. They could get... They could get them to Israel, maybe. They could get them to Lebanon. They could get them to Turkey or Saudi Arabia or Iran. But that was about as far as they could go. The problem is, those chemical weapons had a shelf life of seven years. The last time we delivered them to Iraq was 88 and 89. That would be 95, 96. In 98, those chemical weapons were two years past their shelf life. I'm, I'm sure they still had some deadly effect. I'm sure it wasn't that they were complete, they just suddenly turned them completely inert. You know, it was like, whoop, that, uh, you got to throw them away. But they're not full potency. So they're not a threat for all intents and purposes anymore. And most likely the Iraqis blew them up, but when they got blown up, the serial numbers got lost and no amount of sifting was ever going to retrieve those serial numbers. So at that point, it was probably 100%. Right before... They're, he's ready to give the clean bill of health before Scott Ritter is ready to do this. There was, I think, one more location they needed to inspect. Bill Clinton orders him out. He goes, no, I've got one location left and I'm done with my job. Let me go investigate it. Bill Clinton says, I'm ordering you out because I'm going to bomb Iraq. Why are you bombing Iraq? You ready? Iraqi radar turned on for a U.S. fighter jet flying over Iraq. I don't even think it locked on. I think it just turned on. So they picked up the radar blip. And so now Iraq is going to be bombed as punishment for turning on their radar. Scott Ritter is like, wait, what? They turned on the radar so they get bombed? I'm so close to finishing. I've just spent six years of my life. Let me finish this thing. And Clinton goes, get out, and then bombs Iraq. The U.S. news reported on the press that, that lies to you on a regular basis on every issue reported Saddam Hussein throws out U.N. weapons inspection regime. Unbelievable. I'm Unbelievable. Bill Clinton ordered the weapons inspection regime out. There's now, nothing here's the weird thing. So okay. you ask yourself, why? Why not let them complete the process? Every time something went wrong in the U.S., we would bomb Iraq. I think that the Bill Clinton realized that Iraq was a really useful tool. He could distract the U.S. with a bombing of Iraq every time something went wrong, like his penis ended up in the wrong mouth. He just anyway, I, everything he said is probably the truth. But us cutting off medicine and food to them, we don't owe them anything. Just like we don't owe anybody anything. That's what gets me about it all the time. But not owing somebody is different than making sure that they don't have what they need. What do you mean? To, I mean, you're saying that we don't owe them anything. Yeah, that, that is 100% true. But just making it to where they can't live their life, that doesn't go hand in hand with we don't owe them anything. What? Like, we, we shouldn't help them, but... Why I'm, can't they feed themselves? Well, I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't understand the sanctions and all that stuff. Like, why couldn't they get food and medicine? Yeah, I, I don't know the whole story, but I get... We, but that's what I'm getting at. It's yeah, not we our job we, we to should, feed the world. I understand that, but not feeding them and actively making sure that they can't... Or not even actively making sure, but just passing laws to where they can't get food and medicine. That's a different thing. I'm not saying that we have to uh, But that's why we that's go why we, out and make sure that we feed the world, because I, I don't agree with that. I think that we need to take care of ourselves. First and foremost, but it's one thing saying we're not going to help you, and it's another thing saying 
we're going to pass sanctions on you to where it's impossible for you to do this. That's why we deal with China and Russia and other countries. But if we would just stay out, let them fuckers do what they want to do. Don't, don't screw with us. Right. But I don't want to use the excuses because they're, they're, they're barbaric to each other anyways. But the United States has never been, as, as you get older, especially you realize how crooked ass our damn government is on everything we do. There's no country that we're involved with that we're doing it because we're nice to people. Right. It's always because there's a, an ulterior motive on everything we do. Mm -hmm. Everything. You know, Cuba, we couldn't buy. Right. Russia got involved with Cuba. And it's worried us ever since. Let the Russians and the Cubans do what they want. I think they should open Cuba back up. It would be cool to go. Well, I don't know. It's a communist country. Do you want to go to a communist country? I would love to go to Havana. Really? Mm -hmm. That's one of my bucket list places. I tried to go a couple years ago, and I couldn't get a fucking hotel. Couldn't get a hotel. Could get airline tickets, but I couldn't get a hotel. You can fly to Jamaica and go from Jamaica to Cuba. And I think you can go from Mexico to Cuba. I don't know, man. I'd be nervous. I'd be a nervous son of a bitch over there. And I don't know why. I, I mean, is it just because of what I've always heard growing up here in the United States? I don't know that Cuba would be any more... But that's what I'm saying. I think Mexico is a lot more dangerous than Cuba is. But that's what I'm saying. Is it is it as bad as what they? I don't I don't think so. I mean, there's no sense in looking up what the murder rate in Cuba is because the government's going to tell you what different. Right. You know, it's funny that you, all, they have the greatest healthcare system in the world supposedly, but I promise you, Cuba? if rich Cubans are so sick, right. it's coming to the United States. I uh, I think that Cuba would be. I think anywhere you travel. Not not anywhere, because there's a lot of bad seeds. But if you don't hang out with bad people, bad shit ain't usually going to happen to you. Not all the time. But Chicago, for example, everybody knows now Chicago's Myrtle Capital of the world just about. You go to the right places in Chicago, yeah, you're probably great. great. Great city. But you go to the bad neighborhoods, and shit's going to happen to you. And Mexico is that way most places i think i think most people and it's not there are some people that get robbed and buses get hijacked and shit but the average person in mexico if you're binding your p's and q's you're gonna be okay my wife had a customer she was telling them about our recent trip to isla and she said last time they were in mexico um her brother-in-law or something like I, I i can't remember the relations to this lady but he got a got a nasty cut on his hand somehow and it got infected so he went to a mexican hospital and it did not get better. Like mm. He's he's there for days. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And they're like, listen. Go home. We've got to take him to America. And like, he's not going. They're like, well, what do you mean he's not going? So he's not going. Unless you pay 30 grand. Cartel owned that that place. And they were not about to let. They paid 30 grand to get him out of the country. No shit. 30 grand. 30 large. To get him on a plane back home to where he could. Save his hand. Proper medicine. Mm. So, I mean, the, but, they, but they had them by the balls. But the majority of people that go to Mexico, if you do the right thing, you're not going to have a problem. Well, I mean, all this guy did was catch an infection. He didn't do I anything said, wrong. I said most people. Oh, yeah. Most situations right. are people going to strip clubs, right. buying drugs, going to, you know, if you stay on the beaten path, mm -hmm. you're going to be good. I saw a video just the other day of some couple was at, uh, I don't know if it was in Cosmail or Cancun or somewhere. They missed the boat. Going back? Going back to get on the, the... No, 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 no. Getting on a cruise ship. Oh, oh. They missed a cruise ship oh, deal. Oh, shit. That's a big, big deal. Oh, and they were like raising hell and stuff. Well, why dang it? They should have waited for it. They, hold up fucking, they tell you to be back at a certain time. Be back at a certain time. I don't know how many people are on a cruise checking out Cosmel, but, you know, should have been, everybody else made it back. I saw two girls in Playa about 10 years ago, one of the times we were there. We were eating at Senior Frogs, and it's right there by the dock that goes on to where the people get back to the cruise ships. And that thing was maw, maw, trying mm -hmm. to get people on. And these girls are stumbling and laughing and shit. And I thought, that's exactly where someone gets murdered it's right where there. Where you get taken. You know? And you just you don't put yourself in that situation. Mm -mm. But I would like to have a cruise ship. How many people get left behind? Well, there might be a number on that I could find. That, would, that would be interesting. Because you know it happens all oh, ever, ever cruise. Every fucking port, probably. Yeah. Someone doesn't listen, and they just make dumb decisions. Left behind on cruises. Uh, over 7 billion people are left behind. Huh? That can't be right. I don't think 7 billion people go on a cruise. That seems large, doesn't it? It does, since I'm one that's never been on one. 
Mm, cruise ships leave behind passengers frequently. <clears throat> I think seven billion is a little. Yeah, that's way. That's a whole lot. That's a lot. Um. Oh, I can't find. I can't find a number. But I mean, there, there's article after article. Eight Norwegians get left behind on a from a cruise. Oh, this over there. Do you have any desire to go on a cruise? Because I really, really don't. No. I would actually like do an Alaskan cruise, just because I think it would be really pretty to see that stuff up there. I mean, it would be. You're getting a lot of different vacations in one, just because you're like different ports and stuff. But I, I, I I'm not know. into that. I would rather go to where we did. <clears throat> I'm telling you right now, I'm as. Isla is my favorite place I've been in a long, 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 long time and will be my destination of choice for if I'm going to Mexico, to Cancun area for sure, that's where I will go. Mm-hmm. It, it is by far, I've, I felt safe. There. I felt more, I felt safer there than I would in Dallas right now. Right. Uh, one guy says, uh, in the 22 cruises I've taken, I've only seen it happen once. So maybe it doesn't happen as frequent as we think it was. Well, this couple, well, they were ranting and raving, and you could see the old ship just, you know, going off. off. in the distance. And they were like, can someone get a boat to connect? He said, you don't think you understand that cruise ship's not stopping to board some people out in the middle of the ocean. It says there's a 30-minute grace period here. Yeah, but here's but the But that would piss me off. If you tell people 1 o'clock and then you don't leave till one thirty, you know, then they're like, well, why not 2 o'clock? Well, know? I mean, I think that that's probably built into wherever they're going next, right. but that would piss me off being there at 1 and then... We've got this 30-minute grace period. Maybe they knew there was a 30-minute grace period, and that's why they left. I don't know. I mean, you could you could see them just stumbling up there. Boy, they were bitching and raising hell, and the little Mexican guy's like, you know, hell, I don't, not my fault. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Well, all their stuff. This was, I think their passports were even on the boat. Oof. And I, I, I don't know. They may make you take your passport with you when you get off. I, I don't know, but. I think that that was one of the problems is their passport was on there. So I was going to have to try to get a flight home somewhere to go somewhere else. And don't be stupid. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I guess you'd go to the U S consulate if you're in Cancun. Cause I think there is one there. Yeah. A fire. This is seven days old. Fiery debate has started after a cruise denied eight passengers to board the ship after they failed to make the 3 PM cutoff time. Was this the one in the uh, Maldives? No. More Norwegian Dawn ship left the tourists on an African island. Yes. Some without their possessions after the private tour they were on ran late. Yeah. The group have now made their way by plane, ferry, and car to Senegal, over 2,000 miles from wherever. Uh, departed last, departed without them last Wednesday. Yeah, I saw that video. They were in the middle of nowhere. See, but that's that's a little bit different because they were on a, an excursion that ran late. It's not like they were just dicking around in town and missed and, it. Now, but, but, but did that time. excursion though provided by the ship? That, that if probably they did, not. If they did, then that should be on the ship's. If they're partnering yes. with those people, yes, they should. You know, because you'd be done. I'd be like, well, they'll call the ship until we're late. It's on right. their deal. But I bet it was a private excursion. They knew they were landing here at. 10 o'clock and they were going to have four hours or five hours or however long to dick around. And I think one couple was even on their honeymoon or was going to get married. And then another couple, if I read out that on that deal, didn't have any money. Mm. It was, it was a jacked up deal. I'm following a really interesting group on Instagram right now. It's two men and a woman and they drive, they're driving from London to Cape town, South Africa. Uh, they, they, they went across Europe. And went to Italy and took a ferry across and landed in, oh shit, United Arab Emirates or one of them countries right there. And now they're driving along the wet, the western coast of Africa, and then their 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 frame on their truck started splitting. Mm-hmm. They're camping out a lot of nights. I just don't think I'd like that. Fuck, there is. No, I'd be so damn nervous because they have to. They're having to bribe people at every freaking. Every country they go into, they have to bribe the border patrol. They're going to hold them back, and they got to show their their passports and IDs. And it's one little third world country after another third world. You can get into Mexico and back. You can go to Costa Rica and get back. But when you have to go to twelve or fifteen third world countries, the chances of you skating by. And now they're clear into. Uh, I think they were in Senegal last, mm-hmm. but it's been interesting because. They went to one place that the everybody was nice and polite. They didn't try to jack no money out of them. And they got their vehicle fixed there, but and they're staying at these hotels at a few places, and then they'll just camp out. I'm all for, you know. I love hearing stories like that because that's the opposite of me. Oh, I couldn't do that. I like a lot of structure. I like a, even more structure whenever I leave the country. 
So part of me is like, yeah, you know, go be a hippie, explore the world, da 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 da. And then the other, I mean, it's just it's romantic to me. There's no way I could do it. No fucking way. You're worse. You'd be a whole lot worse than I would be at it, and I couldn't do it. No, oh, I'd be terrible. That's I would be terrible. I get nervous whenever I go just, and I've got all my and all my P's and Q's reminded. London to Cape Town is the name of it. London to Cape London Town. London dot two dot Cape Town on Instagram. Karen, James, and Spence, just three besties driving from London to Cape Town. Yeah, that's stupid. And they're on day twenty one right now, and they're I don't know where they're at right now. It's day twenty one, but I've been following them. I, I enjoyed the whole the the stuff, but just and damn. I'm sure they're gonna make it back just fine and have a hell of a story. Yeah, but when I go and do this. Andy gets taken at the first checkpoint that went wrong. Never saw Andy again. They went and stayed at one, uh, the British high commissioner in one place. They're in Gambia. I mean, they went all over the place and just, some of it looks like shithole. Some of it looks kind of pretty and stuff, but man, just, could you imagine going to some of them places and trying to eat something right. that's not going to make you shit your lungs out? Now here's my dumb question for the day. Is there a U.S. embassy everywhere? They're, they're from London. I understand that. Say I wanted to go London to Cape Town. Is there a U.S. embassy? And every country, has every one. country I th- has. I, th- I think so. I mean, at least there is a little bit of a saving grace if shit really did pop off. I don't know, but I don't know if Britain does. Does Britain? Is there embassies they used to all one over? Time. Hell, that was all British colonies at one time, so they're not really well liked, right? Hmm. It's and the thing is, if you'd have made that trip in 1952 you probably would have been fine because people well the whole world there was places that were bad but a lot you'd have been a lot safer because they respected you but nowadays there's no they just there's a lot of hatred towards americans and you know did you see this uh a 23 year old woman very good looking woman too by the way Posed as a 14-year-old girl and molested uh, various boys that she met on social media and Snapchat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. How do you how do you use the word molested? She was having sex with him. That's not molesting. If you're a 14-year-old boy and you've got a 23-year-old woman having sex with you, would you consider yourself being molested? But they thought she was 14 the whole time. I don't give a shit. I'm asking you. Would you consider that being molested? Uh, no. I mean, you're splitting. You know, They're like, using the word molesting really different. The difference is they... 50-year-old man trying to have sex with a 13-year-old girl and taking advantage of her, that's molesting. But I don't understand. She's a very good-looking woman. Yeah, I know. I'm 23 confused. years old yes. in, in her in her, in her her prime of her life, and she's acting like a 14-year-old girl on Snapchat to have sex with teenage boys. I don't get it. I, I, what what went wrong in her life to where she's like, you know what? She can get a date. Yeah, she's she a pretty girl. She can get a date on Saturday night. Yeah. Like, go to the go to a regular bar. Yeah, eighty percent of the hard dicks listening to this right now would go out with her in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I'd, I'd be all about it. And like I've seen some of the videos that she's posted, and you know, she's always shaking her little ass, and I don't understand it. There's some weird people. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get what happened. But yeah, all these I, th- I can't remember how many boys there were, but uh, they all thought she was fourteen. She's going to jail now for there's it. A, there's a lady that got arrested yesterday for having sex with a dog. I saw that. What yeah. the hell's wrong with people? Yeah, I don't know. And no. her husband's phone. Well, I think he videoed it, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> just don't. There's, whoa. Can you imagine that conversation the first time? Listen, you know? honey, here's what I want you to do. <laughs> I want you to reward Jack. He had a hard day hunting today. He's very, yes. he's very pent up. Yeah, I don't know how that happens the first time. I mean, just because if it's her idea... As a husband, you got to be like, what kind of fucking freak am I married yeah, to I'm here? Out, I'm out on this. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. Enjoy it, but I'm not going to sit and video it. Yeah, I just... Uh, mm. <laughs> what a screwed up world we live in, too, where shit like that is considered normal. Here, this is going to show one of the videos of her kind of doing a little TikTok dance. Printed, pretending wow, she would be she homeschooled. Good, That's what I'm saying. Looking. She's very, very attractive. She don't look no 13, though. Well, you know, when you're 13 or 14, 15-year-old boy, you're just kind of thinking... Kind of thinking you hit the lotto, maybe. Well, I don't think they've been molested. Uh, in the letter of the law. No, 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 on the letter of the law. But I'm talking about, here's what's happening right now with that 14-year-old boy. He's like, damn, I wish I'd have told nobody that shit. Because mm-hmm. they ain't going back. Have you seen the video where the 80-year-old American tourist died over in Africa where the elephant ran her over? Do what? Here comes an elephant. Yeah, I see it. It's charging. It's coming after him. But here's what doesn't make sense with this. They stopped the truck. Why oh, that's stupid. Why would you stop the truck right here? So they here? could take a picture of it. Hey, 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 
It's pissed off. It doesn't show her dying, but that's all it shows is the car getting knocked or the golf cart getting knocked over. Why the hell did she? What, did, I'm like you. Why did they stop? Why do you even put yourself in that position? I'm telling you right now, I at, there was a time in my life when I would have loved to go to Africa to take pictures. I don't care about shooting anything over there, but with all the political unrest, I don't want to go over there. But that would be a bucket trip to get a run and see all them animals. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really would. I mean, to all of that stuff. What gets me is they pull up, you see them some point. Their day I saw one in a damn line or a tiger comes up and crawls up in the damn golf yeah, cart I've with seen the people. That. Why I'd be nervous? Drive, fuck, don't leave me here. <laughs> well, it's like all those people that are uh Americans that are stranded in Haiti right now. I mean, you go to a shithole country and shit pops off, you're just in a shithole country. Yeah, it's kinda like the people that I mean, and that can happen in Africa. Like all that shit's just on a it's on it's hanging by a thread over there. There's a couple that backpacked across Iraq or Iran, and then they never seen them again. Well, big, that's a shock. Right. I mean, some people just do not understand there are shitheads in the world. Mm -hmm. They're so uninformed, and everybody's a victim, and, oh, they're the nicest people in the world. No, they hate you. Yeah. They hate you. If you go to a Muslim country and you're a Christian, they don't like you. You know, if you're gay and you go to a foreign or to a Muslim country, they're going to throw you off a roof. It happens. Yeah, you that, know? that's what they said about Rihanna, because I guess she was dressed as a nun doing some sexy dances and pulling her boobs out. And they're like, why don't you dress? Why don't you do that to uh, a, a Muslim to dress like a Muslim and do that? Well, it's because you know why. They'll cut your head off. They would be after you. Catholics don't really give a shit. They're just trying to cover up their next scandal. They don't give a shit about Rihanna. My last airport I was in, I saw a guy kneeling on a deal. Six yeah. in the morning. I think you saw it too. Yep. Right now, Christians, that's our problem. Yeah, I didn't stop. I didn't stop to pray. No, 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 no. Muslims are devout, very devout, and they stick to their guns, and that's why they're taking over the world right now. Regardless of whether you believe all the crap they don't they believe in, because I don't, but I got a lot of respect for them for how dedicated they are. You imagine going down to a Baptist church anywhere in the country and saying, "Hey, you're not going to eat from daylight to dawn, and then, mm -hmm. and then you can have some oatmeal at dark." I don't, you think kiss this, my ass. I don't think this religion's for yeah. me all of a sudden. I'll put my 10% in the plate and I'm walking on down the street. That's <laughs> right. the end of it. And I'm not doing that stuff. You know? Yeah, just, I, I, you know, all of a sudden I don't really think this is for me. I guess, are we at the end of Ramadan right now or something going on? I you? have no clue. I saw I something happen somewhere and that was a part of it. They were, someone got killed by somebody or something and they said, yeah, it was the end of Ramadan and they were celebrating. Hmm. I mean, we're talking about a religion that has honor killing. Can you imagine killing your daughter because you don't date somebody you like? Right. Man, it's just what a bunch of sickos. Masters start this weekend. Tiger playing? You told me Tiger was out for the year. That's what they said earlier when he got hurt. Is he playing? I think he's playing. Well, he's not out for the year. He won't win. Well. I mean, he might. I'll get you I'll give you ten to one odds right now on a hundred dollar bill that he don't win. No. You sure? Yeah. Twenty to one. No. He hadn't played. He hadn't been playing. He's been hurt. He's he's the game has changed. He's a great golfer. When he's on, ain't nobody can beat him, but his his days are past him. I mean, he really is. Let me see if I can get the full list. Yeah, I think Tiger's playing. I'd pull for Tiger now. I'd like to see him win it, but he ain't going to win. Everybody does now. Here's the betting odds. But see, look at it. who's right there on the page. Tiger, Tiger Woods, because Tiger. Tiger, everybody wants to be Tiger Woods. Tiger sells, baby. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, Scotty Texas boy, four to one. Scheffler, Cameron Young is a sleeper. Top ten locks. Is that, Cameron Young? Is that? Look at him real quick. See where he's from. Is that Chandler's roommate? How am I going to do that? I don't know. I'll look him up and see. Cameron Young. Yeah. I thought Chandler's roommate was Cameron. We're going to have him on tomorrow. Cameron Young is from New York. Okay, that's not... Where do you go to school at? Wake, Wake Forest. Forest. That's not him then. It was a Cameron that uh, Chandler was roommates with, I thought. Hideki is... Tiger versus Phil. Close one. Mickelson, but it's close. This one is difficult. Tiger is apparently hitting the golf ball well. But I can't trust he's going to finish the tournament given he's only completed one major since 2020. So... He's the greatest golfer that ever lived. Tiger, 100%. Yep. yep. Jack Nicholas would probably be second. Yep. And I'm going to catch shit from there from somebody. Go ahead and text me. I know. But that's my opinion on it. And that's what I'm going with. Uh, I used to really like Phil a lot, too. 
because he wasn't Tiger. Then I started going for Tiger, and I don't dislike Phil either. This says he's the Tiger would go for a tw- record twenty fourth straight made the cut at the Masters. Yep, so he's never again, played so he's, a Masters where he didn't make the cut. Yeah, hell, he won the second one he ever played in. Well, if I had cable, I'd watch it. But damn it, you can watch it on. Um, ah, yeah, I've got other stuff to do this weekend, Jeff. When are you going to turn your football back or TV back on August? Football? When football August. starts, yeah. This would be fun to watch, though. Did you, I, I saw a deal the other day on on quarterbacks. Did you know that half of the first round draft quarterbacks are bust within three years? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It just goes with the numbers. I mean, every, most people are bust in the NFL. This year's quarterbacks that are going to come out and draft in the first round. There's going to be six of them probably. Only two will work work out to be worth a shit. Do you think Caleb Williams is a bust or going to be the real deal? He is the real deal. So you think he's legit? How much of that is circumstance, though? Well, he's going to a good spot. They've they fixed their offensive he, line in Chicago. They've is got he going to a good spot? Keenan Allen. They've it's got cold. DJ Moore. It doesn't matter. Brett Favre went to Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers did. Yeah. But Joe Shallon went to Buffalo. But K- like uh, Joe Burrow's in fucking Cincinnati. How much of it is circumstance? If well, Vince Young doesn't go to Tennessee, if Vince Young came out today in today's NFL, it's a completely different story. It's a different game. Or what about Matt Liner? I don't even remember where Matt Liner went. Where'd he go? Uh, the Jets, maybe? No, it wasn't that. No, that was the other Sanchez that went there. Who was the other USC? Where did Matt Liner go to? Like, it don't matter. But if Matt Liner finds himself in a different situation, no, he is didn't. it a different career? No, Matt Liner played college with the best offensive line, best, best he had. Everybody around him was a superstar. Matt Liner was so overrated. Okay. Pretty ugly of you to say oh, that. Oh, he was. Cardinals. He went to the Cardinals. Terrible quarterback. But but when he went to the pros, he had less talent than he did when he was in college, playing against lesser foes. Right. But so, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these like big-name quarterbacks that go one, two, or three, like whoever goes to New England is fucked. If yes. Caleb Williams goes to New England, he's fucked. I agree. But if Caleb Williams finds himself in the right situation, maybe it, maybe he gets a career out of the deal. But when Peyton Manning went to Indianapolis, everybody said the same thing about him. That he was screwed? Yeah, fuck it. Wasn't nothing there. But he wasn't very good for three years. Well, it's because they didn't have a team around him. Exactly. Troy Aikman's first year in Dallas, he was fucking terrible. But a lot of times, it depends on if you get the pieces around you. Caleb Jimmy, Will- John- Jimmy Johnson is the one that changed, that, changed his trajectory. Because right. he knew he had to go all in and get all of the big names. He realized how to play... How to win in the NFL in the 90s. And he that's all, what he did. He mortgaged everything for a couple of years. He also was a master at drafting because he knew all those college kids had done a great job of drafting. Right. An excellent job. That, not that, the, the Chicago Bears have addressed a lot of their offensive line problems. DJ Moore is a legit, very good receiver. They got Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's a good receiver. They got He's a old. good, they got Cole Komet. Who's a good tight end, and they got DeAndre Swift, who's a very good running back. He's got some tools to work with, a lot better than going to New England for sure. Yeah. Now, do I know he's going to be a bust? I don't know. There's a lot of guys that look good in college that aren't very good. If he's a bust, I wouldn't be surprised. Has USC had a good quarterback? USC in the in the pros. Carson Palmer, uh, Liner was no good. Uh, Sam, Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold, Sanchez, a bust. Sanchez. Sanchez bust. Uh, a lot of people think Sam Darnold's going to be really good this year. I don't know about that. Uh, I who else has USC had? I mean, I'm sure they did over the years, but I don't. The, probably Carson Palmer is probably the best one I can think of. Rodney Pete was a deal. John David Booty was a Matt best. Matt Barkley. Marinovich was. Matt Barkley. Castle. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're all. So, no, I'm saying that probably not. But is that because, like you said, they play with the best SC is such a powerhouse that they get all these good recruits. So that whenever they go to the NFL, they're playing with lesser quality. Uh, I, I that back, well back then USC was probably they ran the ball all the time. Things are different nowadays. But I'm going within 30 years. But but that's why Matt Leinart was so good in college. He was they had they were just loaded all around them. The whole team was same with Ohio State quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. I mean they're the same way. Fuck, they got more talent. Name the best Ohio State quarterback now. C.J. Stroud's looking like he's the real deal. I think C.J. Stroud probably is going to be the first fantasy quarterback taken, other than uh, Mahomes. Josh Allen will still go. I don't know, not with that, unless they address some wide receivers. I don't think Josh Allen can make 
receivers better like Brett Favre did and like Patrick Mahomes does. Brett Favre was famous for making shitty receivers really good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that Matt Josh Allen has that. But Matt Ly or uh, Ohio State's the same way. Alabama's the same way. You know, is is two of the best Alabama quarterbacks since Joe Namath? Probably. Yeah, or Ken Stabler. I mean, they haven't. And I'm not sold on Tua. He's in a good system with a, an offensive genius. He is. And he's got – Tyreek Hill causes teams, and Jalen Waddles, it's a lot of problems. Well, it didn't translate last year. Well, they got hurt. They had a lot of injuries. They lost a ton of defensive players right there in the last three weeks of season. A lot. You lose both your start defensive ends. You lose two different cornerbacks and stuff. That kills a team. And you ran into Mahomes, and it was 20 below. It, yeah, I mean, it would, well, it, they weren't healthy then anyways. The same Miami Dolphins week 10 probably would have might have beat the Chiefs. But it don't matter. It's when the playoffs will count. But I don't know. But Caleb Williams, it looks like the best prospect, they say, in a long time. Andrew Luck, they say. I don't know. I watched him against Texas as a freshman. He's got a ton of athletic ability. He can run. He can throw. He's going to be pretty good in the NFL. I wouldn't be I would be more than happy to take him as a fantasy quarterback. I think he's a whole lot better than Anthony Richardson's ever going to be. Ooh. I don't agree with that. Anthony Richardson, all he did was run the ball. I'm taking Anthony Richardson ahead of Caleb Williams. Yeah. Pro, pro, he, he's a proven commodity. I'll tell you what. I'll bet you a tomahawk steak dinner. He's a proven commodity. He I'll take I'll bet you a tomahawk steak dinner right now that Caleb Williams has more fantasy points than Anthony Richardson next year. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Fantasy points. No, I'm not saying that. How many games constitutes? Like, let, let, like if somebody gets hurt. Th th then then we'll use common sense. Okay. If they both play 12 games, that's what we'll go by, okay. 12 points. Games, okay. we won't, yeah, we won't. It's not fair if you only get to play three points. Yes, I agree with that. On a fair playing level, a playing field, level playing field. Okay. You're taking Caleb Williams. I think Caleb Williams has more points than Anthony Richard. Uh, let, let's let's look at these quarterbacks. Drake May, uh -huh. I think he's a huge bust. Yep. They say he's going to be the next Josh Allen. I say no. Just because he's white, big, and can run and throw, no. I think he's a bust. The kid that's uh, – I like the kid from LSU. Uh -huh. I like him a lot. I think he's the second-best quarterback. If I was drafting a third quarterback, everybody loves the kid at Michigan. I love the kid at Washington. Penix? Yes, because he can throw the deep ball. Right. And I really, really like him a lot. Um, I like Jaden Daniels as the second best. If I had the third the third pet, I would take the kid from Washington. Bo Nix is like 42 years old, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty old. He had a lot of COVID year, redshirt year, and some other shit, I think. The ugliest guy in the draft is Spencer Rattler. Yeah. Woof, that's not a very pretty man. But one of them guys on the bottom down here that you're not thinking about is the one that's going to end up being really good. One of them on the bottom that nobody's talking about will end up being the um, Brock Purdy, maybe, of the class. Then give me Austin Reed. Austin Reed for 1,000, Pat. There you go. But one of those big guys, one of them guys at the end is probably one that's going to do it. Uh, I like I like Penix a lot. I really do. I watched him against Texas, and I watched him against Oregon a couple of times. He's a gamer. Mm -hmm. If Injuries are his only deal. Someone will get the Giants in the second round ought to take Penix if he's there, and I think he will be. That would be a steal right there. If the Giants could take Penix in the second round and get that other wide receiver, that kid from LSU, or do, Harrison, either one of the receivers are really good receivers. Do the Chargers get McCarthy? No. Fuck no. They've got Justin Herbert. Trade Let me him. tell you something. Boy, you talk about a market right there. If Trade I was him. the Washington Redskins, I would give you every first-round pick for the next five years for him. <laughs> for Justin Herbert? Fuck yeah, I would. Wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, he looks pretty good. I mean, that's what I would do. If them dumbasses want to take J.J. McCarthy, I would – Jim Harbaugh would be on the phone right now. I think, listen, I'll give you a date with my wife, my daughter, <laughs> five first-round draft picks, and you give me Justin Herbert. That would be the stupidest trade in the world to get rid of Justin Herbert. Think so? Yeah. It's kind of like the Cowboys have been talking about trading Dak. Yeah. They're fucking dumbasses. Where are you going to get? You, so you don't like J.J. McCarthy? I don't dislike him He was him with not, Harbaugh, but... one with Harbaugh, knows the Harbaugh system, and now all of a sudden you're going to turn one of the perennial passing yardage – uh, leaders in the NFL with Justin Herbert, and you're going to have him hand the ball off 20 times a game. Yeah. In not, the Harbaugh offense. Yes. No, I wouldn't. I would take – if 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 I was San Diego or the Chargers, whoever they are, and I could get – if I could trade Herbert, I'm serious. His his, his would have to be three first-round draft picks at least. Yeah, he's in his prime. He's 25, 26. Yeah, he's – 
I'm telling you right now, the John, G- Giants can kick Daniel Jones back to him, <laughs> give him 20% of the franchise, and trade for Justin Herbert. That's a game changer for any team other than the Chargers. I'm telling you, the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. If I was Dallas, I'd say, hey, you want Dak? I mean, it would never happen, but. But you, how many teams would you not trade your quarterback for Justin Herbert? All Cincinnati? Of them. All, no. Cincinnati, no. Uh, oh, oh, Kansas yeah. City, no. Buffalo, no. Okay, then where we at? Baltimore, no. That's about it. Do you want to win a Super Bowl maybe one day? Because they're both underachievers, but I think Herbert would be a better NFL or quarterback to win a Super Bowl than Lamar Jackson. But the rest of them... If would... Lamar Jackson gets beaten the first round after this year, are they done with him, you think? They're getting pretty fed up already. I don't know. I don't know how you can. You can't cut the MVP of the league. I didn't say cutting, but you know they're going to be starting... They're having Look a lot of buyer remorse. Dak Prescott, if you're Dallas, would you trade for Justin Herbert? Yeah. Yeah. If you're Houston's not with C.J. Stroud. Green Bay wouldn't, just because Jordan Love came on at the end of the year. I'd rather have Justin Herbert right well, now. Well, so would I, but, but uh, you're not Jordan, having to give up anything. Is Jordan Love the real deal, or is that just a six week, so he was really hot? He looked like it those last six. It depends on what part of the year you look. September to October, no. November to December, yes. And in the playoffs, he looked good. So maybe it just took a while to come on. The New York Jets. Yeah. They should offer everything in the world to get Justin Herbert. Aaron Rodgers has got one year left. This maybe. is a hypothetical thing, too. Like, I doubt that. I, I highly doubt Harbaugh is even considering anything like this. I yeah. just saw his name on there. I know they got him as a fourth quarterback. I think the Chargers pick five. Everybody's for, everybody's for sale for the right price. Yeah, but you would really, really look bad. If you got rid of Herbert and went with McCarthy and he didn't pan out, <laughs> you'd look like a dumbass and a half. I agree look with terrible. you. I agree, but that's why teams don't trade their powerhouses. That's why they hang on to them two years too late. Well, that's the Dallas Cowboys recipe, and now they're bent over a barrel by Dak again. Yeah, I don't know what to do if I was the Dallas Cowboys. For someone that hates Dallas, still I like Dak a lot. I think Dak's a great guy, but. The Cowboys got to make. I I don't know that Dak is the reason they haven't won any playoff games. Mm-hmm. I think their biggest problem is that they make a lot of bad decisions. I think Mike is very overrated. I think Mike in September and October is a beast, but he disappears when it counts. Yeah, and they're starting to say that, but they're using that for the negotiation process. I did him. see. Uh, I think it was Washington. They said they're going to make a big time trade on draft day. I think it was Washington for a quarterback. It's going to be an unprecedented. Trade I, the, the Redskins. Yes. Let me make. Sh- let me double check. Oh, they got the fourth pick, don't they? Or third? They got Maybe the, it wasn't them. They got um, the third pick already. I think it's Minnesota. Uh, big draft day move. Does Minnesota trade up with the Giants and give them Justin Jefferson? Fuck! I just read it. I read it today. It was on Twitter, and it was from like Schefter. It has to be Minnesota or Oakland. I can't find it now. Arizona is the one that's got the really wild card in that deal because they're not going. They're like they like Collar. I was hoping it would just pop up here, but it's not going to. Let me go back to Twitter. I just read it today, and they said that there's going to be a major trade on draft day. Blockbuster trade was what the headline said. Please pop up. Please pop up. Nope. All from 21. Anyway, I can't find it. So, got everybody all worked up for nothing. Yeah. I can't find it. Everything's from 2001. Whenever the uh, Niners traded for the third overall pick. Well, I'm going to... I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if you're moving up to take one of these quarterbacks, I think you're crazy other than Caleb Williams. I think all the rest of them are questionable. Um, the game, the college game, is so much like the NFL game that sometimes we think that them guys are going to step right in and make a big difference. And I think C.J. Stroud was an epiphany. Isn't that the word I'm looking for? Epiphany. But No, that's not right. What's the word I'm looking for then there? Just unusual. Prodigy? Unicorn, basically? Yeah. There, there's not going to be a I – don't, I don't see that happening this year. This says Jaden Daniels is set to meet with the Giants on Monday. Yeah, he'll never make it that far down. 
Never know. People slip. Did you see where your uh, your your Longhorn got busted for a DWI? What a dumbass! But you know he's not. He would doesn't sweat. He doesn't have to take any kind of. Uh, the NFL can't do anything to him. Really? Nope. Because he's not drafted. He's not an employee of the NFL yet. Yeah, but that could still hurt your draft stock. Just no, because it's hurt N- your draft. Just stock. because the NFL can't take action against you doesn't mean that a team's going to be like, ah, hard pass. Happened to Tunsil. Well, there was a little different. How? He got blackmailed by his stepdad for smoking dope. He still fell in the draft. Yeah, because of that. But he was right. blackmailing because he released that video of him smoking marijuana with a gas mask on. Right, but he still fell in the draft. Um, that sweat kid is going to be a... Boy, somebody's going to get still in the third round if they get him in the third. He's a run-stopping son of a gun. Just stay out of trouble for a couple of years just, and... Well, if he goes as a third-round pick and, and plays good, he'll get, he'll get paid still, but it's going to cost him some money up front. It's a character deal. You gotta be smarter than that shit. There's no excuse today's world to get a DWI. Three None. weeks before you're become, gonna become a millionaire. Dumb. Fucking stupid. DWI. Lucky he didn't kill anybody. The the girls' basketball season's over. Is it? Yeah. I saw there was 24 million people watch the finals game. I watched the first half of it. Wow. 24 million people. More than any other basketball game in the last five to ten years. Mm-hmm. She's going to go in the WNBA and nobody's going to watch. Uh, okay, here we just found this. Uh, sweats, blood alcohol level is more than 25% over the legal limit. So what was it then? Eight's the deal. 25% more would be what, 18? Two. Two. 18, two. What's 25% of eight? Two. Basically, yeah. 18, 0.18, I think. Right. No, it would be 0.20. So yeah, 20, 0.20. Hmm. <laughs> had a guy one time blow six o'clock in the morning <laughs> blowed like 0. 0.27 he told me he was it I'm, I'm not drunk oh he took it he took the test at six o'clock in the morning he was arrested at 4 40 in the morning yeah it probably went down a little bit then i'm sure it went down a lot yeah so this says uh his blood alcohol level was about 1.25 but you know clickbait they got me to click on it. Dumbass. Get a good get a good set of friends. Yeah, because those are hard to find. Anyway, anything right. else? Last thing we're talking about real quick before we go. We're, we're, we're two, three months out. We're going to be at Squad Fest. The Tyson fight. Do you think Tyson wins? Yes. By a bunch? I think he wins. You think he knocks his ass out? Uh, are the training videos real? That's if they are, he looks thing. like he's going to kill him. Because if those training videos are legit, then Jake Paul's in for a long night. Oh, he's going to get his ribs broke. I mean, you're dealing with Mike Tyson. Who's an evil man. And he's coming in not smoking pot because he said he wants to be agitated. <laughs> he he said, Jake Paul. I'm going to be cranky. Jake Paul, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whip your ass. And then when we get done with that, I'm going to go fuck your mama. <laughs> No, he didn't say that, but he 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 says he's fucking going to hurt him, basically. I wouldn't want Mike Tyson telling me he was going to hurt me. <laughs> no. No, because that's going to hurt. No. I'd fight his ass, though. You I'd, would. Fuck yeah, for a million dollars? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be a bitch, and the first thing he hits me, I'm done. Right. I'm going to be like, Mike, don't hit me in the face, please. No, I don't know. I think I'd rather... Use it for a week or three days... You're a totally different person, and this is what you said about yourself. You're not a likable person. What, what happens if, if you don't have the medication? Weed. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with my <laughs> tripolar, um, tripolar. <laughs> tendencies or something. But I don't think I'll be smoking for this fight, and I think I'm going to be really, really irritable and nasty. Would you take this before the fight, for example? Normally I do, but at this particular fight, I think I'm going to go pretty raw and, you know, naked. Naked. Any yeah. dislike for, for Jake Paul? Like, you, you want to teach him a lesson. I would do just that, but dislike him? No, I don't. I do not have no grudges against him. He's beautiful. And no, it's not from that perspective. This is from my my, my point of view of g- grabbing glory, you know, Never for money, only glory. I would never risk my health for money. 
I hope he anyway, whoops that white boy's ass. Tripolar I'm, disorder is caused by interactions between borderline personality disorder and bipolar. So I guess he does have tripolar. Well, I'm t- I'm betting on. I hope his tripolar ass whoops Jake Paul. I don't know nothing about Jake Paul except he's a cocky little shit, and I hope he gets his ass beat. Are you going to be pulling for Tyson? Yes. See, everybody is. But I think that's why it's going to sell so good. The only thing would make me is it happier, on Netflix? Uh, no, it's on. Uh, it might be on Netflix or Amazon Prime. It's on one of the streaming services. Mike Tyson. The only person I'd rather see him whoop than fucking Jake Paul's if he got to whoop Barack Obama's ass. Yeah, it's gonna be on Netflix. Yeah, it's a it's a streaming deal. We'll and be able, we'll be able to view live July twentieth on Netflix. So are you gonna have to pay it's for on that? Saturday is it? night. That's after Squad Fest is over. Oh, we will be in St. Yeah. Louis. If I, that's what, if I was Cody and them, I'd have a big old screen oh, of that some bitch doing yeah. a party out of it. And Listen, Cody and Asher, <laughs> since you listen to this, please do this, please, for us. Yeah, That'd you be a hell have, of a party. Oh, big, big time party. But are you going to have to pay for it on Netflix? Like, is it a pay-per-view type I'm deal? I'm sure it is. I mean, you could probably part of your sub- subscription, you may have to pay extra. What we ought to do at, at, at Squad Fest is then let Trevor Shanahan let some people take him on that want to take him on since he pisses everybody off. Be a win-win for all of us. Because I'd be pulling for Trevor because I like Trevor. It doesn't say how to be. It doesn't say how to. Did you see where Stefan's getting married? I did. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Stefan. So good for you. It doesn't say how to. It doesn't uh, say if it's going to be. All right, let's jump out of here. We got Chandler Phillips tomorrow. Check out our new, our new little episodes we're going to have once a week called Did You Know? Useless Knowledge. There you go. Sponsored by Mallard Bay. Anyways, thank y'all for listening to us. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Love you. Bye. Watch for deer. Check out all of our sponsors. Go check out Mossberg, Stanford Outfitters, Alpha Outdoor Specialties, Hemp Hill Farm. Use the promo code BHP. Mallard Bay, Double T British Kennels, Lucky Duck, Ducks Unlimited, Shin Gear, Dirty Duck Coffee, Looking Glass Podcast, Pacific Calls, promo code BHP25, Dive Bomb Industries, Boss Shot Shells, and MLR Graphics.